Welcome back, Confirmands, as we continue to look at the power of baptism, that wonderful gift that God gives us. Uh, as always, you'll need to have with you your catechism, especially your Bible, and you can go ahead and turn in your Bible. We're going to uh, start at John chapter 3 today and spend some time there. And you also need your, your workbook, and I think you can turn to page 178 is where we'll be in your workbook for today. Now, if you remember last time, we looked at the story of Naaman and his washing and his cure from his leprosy. And as a, an illustration of how God uses water for his people, uh, water having both positive and negative effects, but here a positive one of, uh, of helping to cure Naaman. But we also remember that it wasn't the water itself that did this. Um, in fact, the water of the River Jordan was nothing very special. And in fact, it was pretty gross. But what was uh, important about it was that water was connected with the promise and the power of God. And so God worked through that to bring uh, healing to Naaman. It was that that water was attached to the word of God and the promise of God, which was so important. So now we're going to continue to build on that. So take a look at page 178 of your workbook. And there's another story about God's power. It's the story of Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And you also, again, want to turn your, your Bibles at John chapter 3, just starting verse 1. Uh, take a moment to find that, and you're going to want to read that for just a moment. Uh, and in fact, you can pause it while I take a sip of coffee, and we'll come back and talk about that story. So go ahead and pause it. All right, so let's talk about it. Uh, this is the story of, of Nicodemus, and Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And, and a lot of times, the Pharisees um, kind of clashed with Jesus, came into conflict. In fact, it was the Pharisees who wanted to kill Jesus, which might help us answer that first question there in 178. You know, why did Nicodemus come to Jesus at night? Well, he came to Jesus at night probably uh, because he didn't want his colleagues, his friends, to find out that he was interested in what Jesus had to say. Jesus, Nicodemus seemed to be genuinely interested and thought that there might be something to this Jesus as he's preaching and teaching, but he didn't want his friends to find that out. So Nicodemus is curious and he wants to learn more. And Jesus just kind of unloads a lot of teaching on him. And that next question there kind of gets to that. You know, Nicodemus found Jesus' teaching really confusing. What was he confused about? Well, he was confused when Jesus said, you, you had to be born again. Now, Jesus didn't mean that Nicodemus had to shrink down and become a baby again. But rather, he was talking about a different kind of new birth. And he gets very direct. And he says you have to be born again of water and the spirit. And what he's talking there is simply about baptism. That baptism is that water in the spirit that, that causes us to be born again. Uh, now, much like Nicodemus, we might get kind of confused by these teachings, but part of what Jesus is getting at is that it's in baptism uh, and in the, the promise of the word, but also in the working of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's the real power there. That the Holy Spirit is that which kind of opens our eyes to see Jesus. Nicodemus needed that, and, and, and we need it too. In fact, in the story of, uh, in the Gospel of John, Jesus needs to send the Holy Spirit so he can open his eyes. So that the disciples can see Jesus who for who he really is is. It's such an important part of John's story that the Holy Spirit is going to come. And baptism is the means by which that Spirit's going to come. Which leads us to that next question there, or one of the questions on page uh, 178. It says, when the Bible calls baptism a birth, how does that help you understand your relationship to God as not something you choose for yourself, but a gift that he gives? You can just think about the words that Jesus used, that you didn't choose <laughs> to be born. That wasn't something that you decided to do as a child. Uh, and even your parents, they may have wanted to have you, but it was God who created life uh, inside of your mother. It's God who brought that life uh, to fruition and God who uh, provided for your birth and, and everything that you have. Right? That's the same image that's used of spiritual rebirth too, that we are born of the will of God not of our will, not our decision, but the action is all God's. Another way that St. Paul talks about this, he says that we were dead in our trespasses and sin. And dead people don't choose God. 
Rather, God chooses to make those dead people alive. And that's exactly what he does in baptism, that this is all God's work. And we're going to unpack that more in the next video. So we'll see you then.